Aha! Aha! Hello, a very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClure, and we are, of course, live on the Big One Facebook Live. Nine o'clock, nothing gets past me Sunday night. Time for show number 95. How good is that? Our 95th show, and we're live on Facebook Live. This is the big one. Welcome, 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 I say. Lovely to have you with us. I see you all joining me there. That's tremendous stuff, and we'll have a brilliant show tonight because we have so much to talk about and so little time to talk about it in. We will, of course, manage the odd tune for you, so don't worry about that. We'll get that sorted out, and you can choose either the squeeze box or the pipe organ. Good evening, says Dee Gourley. Good evening to you, Dee. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo, Maggie Burrows has joined us. I hope you had a good weekend, pal, says Thomas Hamilton. I did, Thomas. Thank you very much for asking. Go to Drysdale. Good evening. And Dinky Doo, good evening to you. And Dinky Doo, of course. Marvellous to have you with us. Now, I've got two uh, devices running tonight, so two outputs. I don't know which one you'll actually be seeing. And uh, hopefully, we will get sorted out there. Good evening, Scotty. Dinky Doo, says Andy McCrory. How marvellous. To have you with us, Andy. Dinky do to you. Terrific stuff. Is that better? Are we swatch up a clue as we go on? Right. Excellent stuff. Joseph Gibbons has joined us. He says, hello, sir. Hello to you, Joseph. Lovely to have you with us as well. Steve Burrows. Good evening, Scotty. Good evening, Steve. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Scotty Dinky Doo. Hope you've had a great week, says Gary Crossan. I have had Gary, and I hope you've had a great one as well. Lots to talk about tonight. Um, now, the old lady, actually two old ladies, one at 100 that was knocked out, attacked from behind, and the other one that was um, savagely, savagely attacked and beaten um, in her late 90s. Uh, so there you are. Uh, it's shocking, shocking stuff. What is this country coming to and what sort of punishment should be meted out for the perpetrators of that sort of dreadful, dreadful act? Do tell us. We at the Stones concert last night, Scotty. I wasn't looking here. Were you at the Stones concert last night and was it fabulous? Do tell. Spill the beans, I say. Very, very important. So there we go. Steve McKay is watching Dave Hennessy. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo, you're watching Scotty McClure. And we're live on Facebook Live. That's the big one. Sorry, Scotty. I'm watching Soccer Aid on ITV. Not to worry, Lee. You can turn it down or you can uh, you can tune in to McClure um, or you can uh, watch McClure on uh, Facebook Live or Facebook. Uh, the video will still be up and uh, we'll also upload it to YouTube later so you'll be able to see that as well. Are you familiar with the old presenter called Ray Moore, says Joseph Gibbons? I am indeed. I didn't meet Ray. He was from Liverpool, a wonderful, wonderful presenter. He did the early morning show on Radio 2 in the days when Radio 2 was the kind of stalwart of middle-of-the-road listening. So uh, you had people like Ray Moore, you had Terry Wogan, Jimmy Young, Folk like that on tremendous stuff. Judith Chalmers used to do a stint on there as well. And uh, you had all these terrific people. Kenny Everett. Marvellous, marvellous stuff the radio. Sorry about the slight spelling error. Joseph, not at all. No problem at all. But yes, I remember Ray Moore in the morning. Uh, Ray was a bit of a smoker, actually. and had quite a heavy cough. I well, will remember that. But uh, he used to do uh, the Come Dancing, I'm sure, as well. Ray Moore did the Come Dancing announcements tremendous stuff thank you scotty i do apologize feel like i've let you down so lee found you've never ever ever let my clue down it's fantastic lee we're up here we're chit chatting we're in front of the world we're live we're global hopefully we're being allowed um everybody's being allowed to see the program and that is absolutely tremendous not a problem at all and pete murray yes pete murray david jacobs was another great broadcaster on the uh, on radio two we used to have david jacobs Jacobs as well. Gosh, you're bringing back memories. The organist entertains, marching and waltzing, all that sort of stuff. Yes, I can remember the lot. Pete Murray, very, very good as well. I watch the show on Facebook though, says Lee Fan. I think you should, Lee. You can always have two shows running. It's not the end of the world if you have two shows running. And um, we're running an extra device tonight as well so that people don't lose out. I don't know if anybody's got a split screen let me know. Some mad people around Scotty should get life for murder. The concert was brilliant.
Scotty, do you know the stones were staying while up here? Uh, so there we are. They were like, here, home in Gilberton, says Michael Peverell here. Uh, so it's stuff. Hello, says Miranda Campbell. Hello, Miranda. Lovely to have you with us. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and first lord of the internet. I'm not sure if you saw the article in the New Statesman, like the shirt and tie, Scotty. Do you like that? Just thought I'd tidy myself up for my viewers tonight. Uh, so there you are. Article in the New Statesman saying how people are missing the shock jocks and the BBC is missing out because their stuff's become very kind of a little bit on the dull side now because LBC and big companies like that can do the shock jock, which uh, we, we used to all do the chit chat and get into the argy bargy. And of course, I think the BBC should actually hire me. I do. I really think they should, because uh, it would make complete sense. You think about it. I've been broadcasting for 34 years. I've been um, doing Scotty McClue phone-in shows now for 26 years in two weeks' time. I've never, ever put a foot wrong. So they were out of it. one tiny, tiny complaint upheld out of uh, 36,000 hours of live unscripted broadcasting. So they are open to complete interactivity with the audience. Tremendous stuff. It would go brilliant on the BBC. And, of course, they've got the uh, infrastructure. Sammy Stewart, big love, big love to you. Yes, says Miranda Campbell. Absolutely. So she's up for that as well, I say. A massive dinky-do for Scotland after beating England at cricket. LMAO, says Alan Cadden. Hi, Scotty. Dinky-do, pal. Dinky-do. A very happy birthday to the Queen, says Steve Burrows. Yes, very happy official birthday to Her Majesty the Queen. Now, you'll notice Scotty McClue did not seem to appear on the honours list this year. Tut, tut, tutity, tut, tutity, tutity, tut. So there we go. Uh, my great heroes, both Jimmy Young and Terry Wogan, had gongs, of course, but it wouldn't change me one single iota. There, we need you back on the radio, Scotty, doing your stuff like the 90s, says Derek Miller. Absolutely. And not only a happy birthday to the Queen, a very happy birthday to His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. The Duke of Edinburgh, 97 today. Excellent stuff. I'm in the bath listening to your best way to spend my Sunday evening, Scotty. Legend, says Mark Hunter. Thank you, do, Mark Hunter. Lovely to have you with us. And super stuff. Great to know that you're there. Uh, Scotty, I watched Tripping of the Colour. Absolutely marvellous. It makes me proud. However, I still want independence. Gary Crossan, you and I are seeing from the same hymn sheet. Scotland needs to be um, united independently under the crown. So the Scots are united together, they're totally independent, they're under the crown, and they're in the EU. There you are, and that would give you an excellent base for starting. Scotty, um, who have we got here? Oh, Paul Carter's here, excellent stuff. And Mike Henfield, you do, lovely to have you with us. Loved your photo, Mike. Thought you looked absolutely amazing. It's um, 26 years and two weeks' time since we met, Mike. So there you are, tremendous. And uh, Mike Henfield one of the world's top journalists and one of the world's greatest radio managers that you could ever ask for. And he actually hired Scotty McClue originally. So there you are. Wonderful stuff. Excellent. Marie Johnson, lovely big laugh there. Um, hi, Scotty. Good to see you. So Stephen Heggie, Dinky Do. Wonderful Roddy Morrison's watching. Dinky Do, Roddy. Lovely to know you're there. How are you doing, says Kieran Carroll, TC? Charles McLaughlin. Hi, Scotty. Is it my computer or is the program pausing all the time it depends what you're actually looking at channels we're running two devices tonight so there might be a one a bit slow because it's got some big numbers on it so uh, you never know it might be a little bit slow sometimes as the numbers go up as you know we once lost a broadcast there we are. Charlie Morrison joined us. Wonderful stuff. Kevin Pierce is watching. Dinky do. Now guys I'm looking for uh, your advice tonight. The old ladies that are being assaulted, one of them very, very savagely beating the other day, absolutely heartbreaking. What's wrong with this country and what sort of punishment should we give the perpetrators of that sort of criminal act? So there you are. Um, think you're ahead of your time. You must have been one of the original shock jocks. Don't always agree, but that's uh, opinions. Fair play, says Tony Richardson. Tony, you don't have to agree with me as long as you listen and we come to a conclusion that's right. We come out with something that's correct. 
Hi, Scotty. I hope you're well, says Paul Kyra. Uh, see what we win last week at Scotland's Business Awards. Tremendous stuff. Well, Paul Kyra, you put Scotty McClure around at Scotland's Business Awards. I'll tell you that. Because I am in the market for doing interesting things. I do my Master of Ceremonies. I make speeches. I train people in the media. All sorts of stuff. Marvellous. Uh, have you heard the Bluebell Poker for the first time in ages? Can you play that, says Gordon Drysdale. Gordon Drysdale, if I could play the Bluebell Poker, I would be out playing every night. It's not an easy one to play. The great Jimmy Shand brought it to number one in the British charts. He was the biggest selling artist ever. People used to laugh at me. They used Scotty, please, Jimmy Shand on his show. Biggest artist ever. Outsold Elvis. The whole lot. So, are police officers immune from the law? Uh, Thomas Hamilton, they are sick in the head, these people, Scotty. What's wrong? People have no respect for their elders anymore. You're absolutely right. Bring back hanging for these awful people, praying on the elderly. You know, Chris Kelly, it's a terrible thing to have to say it, but I actually thought the other day we need to bring back hanging and string these people up because we must get society back on track. Now, it's only a handful of baddies, but we need to put a stop to it. I don't like the concept of execution, taking another person's life, but that's what they are doing. Although Gandhi did say, an eye for an eye, the whole world will be blind. So there you are. Um, Catherine McNeil, what's wrong? People have no respect. Yes, indeed. I could tell you the punishment, but I don't want to get blocked, says Steve Burrows. No, no, don't do that, Steve. Ron Stewart, dinky do, Scotty, old friend. Well said, Gary. Put the perpetrators in a room with the family and let them deal with the scumbags as they see fit. Hang the bar stewards says Tony Richardson. No, don't hang any bar stewards, Tony. We won't be able to get a drink. So there you are. Stuart McKenna. Um, Scotty, do you know the difference between a police constable and a police officer? Very, very interesting. So there you are. I remember being invited to join the High Constables uh, for a dinner in Edinburgh, the High Constables. So there you are. And of course, the early constables were the Peelers. Uh, Sir Robert Peel had introduced them. Tremendous stuff. Did you see a TV program called Bad Lads Army? Uh, took a shower of real wasters, put them through a few weeks national service, and it sorted them out, says Gary Cross. And I would think it would, Gary. Yes, very, very good idea. So there you are. Murray Ravage has joined us. Uh, Dinky Doo, it's called the New World Order, says Everett Clifford. Everett, explain the New World Order to us all, if you would. Because we do need to sort it out. And as I say, I don't like the idea of execution. Uh, you know, I've only met one really bad man in my life, just one. And uh, he'll know who he is. But uh, you think to yourself, what should the punishments be for badness? So there you are. Uh, now, now, Scotty, give me a mention, says George Rennick. Yes, you've had a mention, George, not a problem. So bring back national service for these mindless animals, says Alistair King. Alistair, I think that's an insult to animals, to be quite honest with you. So there you are. Scotty, that was my attempt at being PC, says Tony Richardson. Oh, I see, Tony, an attempt at being PC. Scotty, I think you'd be a good high court judge, Judge McClue. So there we are. We might bring a program out for that. So there you are, Judge McClue. Excellent. Uh, Scotty, what's your views? Evening boss, still very warm. Dinky news is Murray Ramage. Scotty, what's your views on council tax and the people who can't afford to pay it but being forced into unlawful and illegal debt? I think if you can't pay, then th there is a law called non-habit, right? Non-habit. You can't take money from somebody that doesn't have it. So they are the non-habit rule. Uh, so a uh, Latin term, of course, non-habit. The Bilderberg Group, Google it, it'll explain a lot, says Everett Clifford. Everett, do you not think if there was a new world order, Scotty McClue would be invited to sit at the table? Come on now, for goodness sake. Uh, the program might be on YouTube. The lads that thought they were hard dropped out after the National Service stint, many of them joined up to the army. Says Gary Crossan. Ah, very interesting, Gary. I seem to have frozen a little bit. So hopefully I will stop frozen. What a funny expression on my face. Bring back the electric chair, says Steve Burrows. Now, the electric chair, have you ever seen that, Steve Burrows? The green mile. Bit shocking, actually. Uh, so there you are. Sammy, I can't discuss that. So there you are. 
Um, a wee mention, Scotty Boy, says David Ruff. Yes, absolutely. Yes, but council tax is enforced by a private company. It shouldn't actually be. Obviously, councils have outsourced it, but the council should have to deal with it themselves. You shouldn't be outsourcing uh, something that's effectively government stuff. Gives a wee mention. Entrance says David Ruff, you've just had one. You've just had one. So there we are. Now we've lost that broadcast. Not to worry. Hopefully it will come back. If it the world, I say, we're still up on the other one. So there we go. Now I'm just going to quick knock down. Oh, it's warm in here tonight. Very, very warm in here tonight, guys. I have to say. Right. So that broadcast, we can start it again, guys. Sorry I'm late, says Sandy Howden. I get held up by a Freedom March. Good for you, Sandy. I'm glad to know you're going on the Freedom Marches now and you're starting to see sense. Oh, 30 views, Scotty. You should have become a pirate when you have the chance. No, Donald, you don't understand. Last week with uh, about 12,000 people saw the program, right? You're not working out how it actually works. So what I'm going to do, we're going to have 95 part two here. There we are, uh, because what happens sometimes the Facebook drops out. Loved listening to you when I was a wee bit. You were hard on Scott FM, along with wee fat Bob's his body, Connolly. So there you are. So Donald, you're not understanding quite how this thing works. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, pop back on here and we'll get part two, right? Very, very important. So you just bear with me. I'll bring up part two of show number 95, Facebook Live. It's become a kind of thing, actually, that it drops out halfway through uh, if the numbers are big. And we are running two devices tonight, but not that that's anything to do with it because I've run one device and seen it actually trip out. So at the end of the day, that's why we've got two devices. Marvellous stuff. We'll see if we can restart this one. I don't know if we can. Um, so there we go. I think that's gone into video. It's still seeing live, but I think it's gone into video. Yep, that's going into video. So what I'll do, I'll restart it, folks, and uh, off we jolly well go again. Right, live. And uh, here we go. That's that. Now, lovely to have you all with us. Am I missing stuff like the bunny? Uh, so there you are. Jerry McGark, lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo, thank you very much. Right, so this is uh, show 95, and it's part two. Is that right? Excellent. Show 95 part two there we are and that's that right uh, add a description and our description show 95 part two so and i can sort that out later there we are 95 this is what i see about the bbc they've got superb technical infrastructure and they should be having scotty McClure and i would get them their audience and uh, get them back on track Marvellous stuff. So there you are. Part of the BBC, a little bit anxious about the commercial radio shock jocks uh, taking all the audience. Well, that's because they're very talented people. That's what it's all about. Here we go again, guys. Um, see if we get that way. Right, start live video. So I should be popping up again. If you just lost me for a few minutes, then we should be starting again. Again. There we are. Lovely to be back with you all. And dinky do. You're watching Scotty McClue. And we are, of course, live on Facebook Live. Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. Dinky do, I say. It was fine then. Boom, says Tony Richards. Yes, this is what happens, Tony. But these are technical things, right? Uh, Scotty, do the agency staff have zero hour contracts in the NHS? Do they get the pay rise? Just asking. Uh, Sandy, I would think all workers get the pay rise just because you've got a zero hours contract, right, which is a very clever political austerity, right-wing thing to do, very non-union, all that sort of idea. But just because you've got a zero hours contract doesn't mean you won't get the rate. So I would hope that they would get the rate rise. I don't know who can it. I would need to check it out. And I would hope they would get the rate rise. Why should they not? So there you are. I mean, just because you're on a zero hours contract doesn't mean that you are a, a lesser person. So there we are. So we need to look into all that. But maybe somebody can come on and tell us if anybody's watching who is senior in the NHS and knows what they are talking about with the pay rise. Do people on zero hours contract like carers and uh, freelance staff 
will they get the pay rise? I would assume so. Uh, good evening, Scotty, says Mary Allen. Dinky to Mary, lovely to have you with us. Excellent, and a warm welcome to the Scotty McClue Show. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live. Thanks to every single one of you for all the sharing, all the joining in, all the argy-bargy, all the discussion. Scotty McClue speaks for the people of Scotland and wishing Her Majesty the Queen a very happy official birthday. Happy birthday, ma'am. And Prince Philip, His Royal Highness, the Duke of Edinburgh, a happy, um, not official birthday, his actual birthday. There you are, he's 97 today, the Duke of Edinburgh. And we give thanks for his life and his work. And I speak for everyone. When I say that, so don't start your objections. Good evening, Scotty says Mary Allen. Dinky do. David Hennessy is watching. Michael McGuigan, Richard McCuster, and Stevie McKenzie. Uh, so yes, I would imagine they do, Sandy. So I would hope they would get that. Now tonight we have a lot to discuss, folks. So I hope you'll get onto your devices as quickly as possible. Dinky do again, Scotty. Did you watch the 2018 tripping of the colour? I never miss it. David Hennessy, rum de de dum da rum dum de 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 de. Very, very good, excellent stuff. Trim the colour. I can remember Her Majesty the Queen uh, riding side saddle on Burmese, beautiful black horse, Burmese. And uh, Her Majesty the Queen used to take the salute on Burmese. And Prince Philip rode along beside her. Prince Charles rode along beside her. The whole family were on horseback. Tremendous. Say hi to the wife, Tracy, says James Adamson. Tracy Adamson, dinky do. Hello, Scotty Nator, says James Ridley. James Ridley, dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. Marvelous stuff tonight. Dinky do again. So there we go. Now I've got two devices running. Uh, so I don't know which one you're actually watching. Can I have lots of thumbs up and hearts and tickety woos and dinky doos? First class, wonderful. Uh, tonight on the show, we're discussing what kind of punishment should we give the people that uh, attacked the 100-year-old lady and the 90-year-old lady and savagely beat them? What sort of punishment? What kind of world are we living in when a human being can do that to another human being. So there you are. Thomas Hamilton, dinky do. Thank you very much. Scotty, I have a little trivial question for you. Do you know who the people are who stand at that stand around the speaker in the House of Commons? They'll be the clerks, I would think. The clerks to the House of Commons. There's a whole separate staff in the House of Commons run by Black Rod who's usually um, a retired senior military officer, maybe a major general or something like that in, uh, in the army. And uh, they, they sit in as black rod and uh, take charge of the house. But the speaker is your person. We've had some wonderful, wonderful speakers. I mean, John Berko, great speaker, of course, very, very good on protocol and, uh, and what have you. And uh, Betty Boothroyd, do you remember Betty Boothroyd? She'd been a dancer in her, in her younger days. And uh, the wonderful George Thomas, yes, Lord Tony Pandy, who once said, uh, if you repeat that, I'll have to name you, I'll name you, I'll name you. And then he said, right, right, I'm going to name you. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. So there you are. Uh, no, nope, they're not. The representatives of the City of London, says Body Conley. Is that right, Body? Very, very interesting. So you know more about it than me. Uh, I'm pretty good on procedure and protocol, but you know more about that than me. Uh, hi, Scotty. Long time listener. Don't always agree with you, but do you think we have the right to criticize Islam? Um, it depends. Uh, why would you want to criticize Islam. That's the thing. If you're criticizing somebody who happens to be Islamic, who's done something wrong or against the law, then that's a different thing. But why would you want to criticize an actual, one of the world's great religions? They will be an illegally allowed to put a stop on policy, which is a direct effect on the city of London. Aha! Uh -huh. Now, am I right in thinking that Mrs. Thatcher got herself into a little bit of hot water uh, over something like that? Scotty, I saw a man in the graveyard carrying a coffin. I asked him if it was okay. It all made lost the plot. Oh, very, very good. Thank you, Robert Patterson. Uh, missing you on the radio, big guy.
This is Buddy. And you too, Buddy. Lovely to hear from you. We need more police officers in the street. Many people think they rarely ever see police officers walking around. Well, you don't. When I was young, all the time, late at night, policemen walking about in twos, trying shot doors, big rubber torches, you know, and they stopped people in the street, checked where they were going, what they were doing. But it was a different day, you see, because the whole world closed down for the night. The pubs shut at 10 o'clock. You know, we were diverted off the motorway one day and I looked up one of the main streets in Glasgow and it was absolutely alive at three o'clock in the morning. I'd been driving back from doing a show in Edinburgh, absolutely jumping the place was. So there you are. Um, to have the right to and not be persecuted. Yes. Yes, you're correct, says Body Conley. She did. Aha. The Queen must send written requests to enter the City of London and now to the mayor of the city as it is a principality. Yes, we see that on the signs, don't you? City of London. So there you are, as opposed to City of Westminster. Is that right? Have I got that correct? So there we go. Um, what else is happening over here? We're very, very busy on both devices, guys. I don't know what you're seeing or what's actually going on, but we're busy on both devices. Hey, hey, says Chris Kelly. Hi, Scott. He's Robert White. Welcome back, says Steve Burrows. Dinky do, Steve. Lovely to have you with us. Um, Scotty, there's not enough seats for MPs to get a seat. Uh, I know because I was there on Wednesday. That's why they stand. You have to book your seat. Oh, I think, what about manners? Does, does nobody say, for instance, if old McClue was an MP, would nobody say, Scotty, you, you sit down. I'll stand. Some of the younger ones, you know. Uh, I'm here by accident. Make that 11, says Martin Ward. Dinky do, Martin. Says Martin, you obviously don't understand social media. These numbers all go up and up and up and up. And I think last week we had about 12,000 people actually saw the show. So there you are. Go on, you'll see the little numbers at the bottom. Uh, nobody joins Scotty McLean by accident. You've been guided by a higher power, I would say, to come and join in the show. On the hips, there you are. Scotty, you're a marvel. I really enjoy the show, buddy. Lovely to have you with us, of course. And dinky do. Sorry about this. I'm looking at two devices here. Perhaps we should concentrate on one. That's what I think. There we are. Hi, Scotty. I'm watching in uh, watching in Miami. Buenas noches. Buenas noches to Miami as well. Scotty McClure is global. Tell us where you're watching throughout the world. If you're watching in Europe or in Ireland or in India or Africa, Canada, America, uh, Madagascar, Tasmania, the Arctic, the Antarctic. Australia, New Zealand, Russia, China, Japan, you let us know. Indonesia, only Dennis Skinner's guaranteed his seats as Sandy Howden. So he should be, Sandy. What a great guy. I'm a great fan of Dennis Skinner. And there you are. And um, I remember um, Tony Benn's mother used to stay at the back of my father's shop. So there you are. Very, very interesting. Tony Benn's mother. And I met Tony Benn, of course. Lovely, lovely guy. Uh, so there we are. We, we met at a May Day rally in Yorkshire, all the brass bands, and we were in the park in Barnsley. Somebody from Barnsley will come on and remind me of the name of the park again. We're at the park in Barnsley. So there we go. Lovely to have you with us. I'm missing people. Hi, Scotty. How are you, my friend? Alex D. Moon, and you're on. Dinky Do says Wadge has joined us. Good evening, Scotty. Hope you're well. So Stephen Menzies. Um, I like your tie, pal, says Thomas Hamilton. Thank you, Thomas. I thought I'd smart myself up. I used to get a white shot on, but I went for the silver tonight. I like your comment on Islam. We should take each person on their own merit. We have knife and gun crime and old ladies being beaten silly in their beds, good and bad, in every race or creed. Absolutely, Carol McFarlane, you're quite right. And why have people got a right to criticize the world's great religions? Judaism, Christianity. And you've got to remember that uh, Catholics and Protestants are part of the same religion. They're not a different religion. It amazes me people say, ah, but they're of a different religion. They're not. So there you are. Um, Mr. McClue, that's me checking in. Good evening to your good self. This is Douglas McPherson or McPherson, but I'm going to call him McPherson. Marvellous. Brilliant as usual, Scotty. We'll get our photo taken together one day. Absolutely. I used to get invited for tea on the terrace 
at the House of Commons. That's where you were the other day, Sandy, judging by the picture. You were on the terrace at the front of the House of, at, um, well, I suppose at the back of the House of Commons, really overlooking the river there, tea in the terrace. Uh, marvellous, marvellous stuff. Um, did you see uh, that uh, we're good to, uh, Labour are going to have another go at things? I think in Scotland, Labour should really back independence and apologise for betraying the people of Scotland. That's why they ended up in the wilderness. Shocking, they are. If I'm looking away, guys, I'm looking at one of the other devices here. Uh, Billy Connell's watching Dinky Doo, John Paul Waterflow, come on, Gus McPhee, lovely to have you with us, Scotty McClue. Tonight we're talking about the um, two old ladies that were uh, savagely beaten by thugs, 190 and one over 100. So there you are, shocking. I say, what is this country coming to and what sort of punishment should these people have for doing that? Uh, I love listening to debates, says Carol McFarlane. Well, Carol, we like a good debate what we're going to try and do is get people interacting uh, not just on facebook I'm, i can't really be bothered with all this typing stuff those things up we should be talking live face to face and uh, one of my great wishes is that one of the big television companies perhaps the bbc give scotty mcclure a slot say on a friday night between 11 and 11 30 or something like that and we go live and talk to the people so there we are. Uh, Brian Morrison, I can't actually talk about that. So there you are. Sorry about that. But that's that, I'm afraid. Uh, the law is the law, so we can't discuss that. Um, I'm sure it'll be a very interesting subject for discussion, Brian. But as I say, I can't discuss it. Uh, ah, I've got pork for dinner, Scotty. It's not very good. Six pounds with veg and coffee. Very, very nice. So there you are. No, you're very lucky you got anything, Sandy. I don't think you should be boring or cringy. You look great. I think you should become an MP. Uh, what about uh, what about joining the old National Party there? That would be tremendous. Right, there we go. Now, I'm just going to do this. Now, it's time for a share, folks. In fact, we're way, way overdue with our share. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Right, very important that you share. Uh, we're too soft in this country. Hang them. This is Gary Crossan. As I say, Gary, uh, those of you who missed it at the start, I really was very, very tempted to say, yes, bring back the rope for these people. It's a dreadful thing to have to do to take another person's life. But, uh, you know, that's what they deserve. And perhaps amputation for thieves. If somebody takes money off you, uh, you know, a guy once took some money off me, and you think, amputation, you know, and then they can't do it. So there we are. Done it, pal. Says Thomas Hamilton. Hi from South Queens Ferry. Says Jason Connolly. Jason Connolly, dinky-doo. Lovely to hear from you. Again, you're watching Scotty McClue. Catherine Murray. Nice to see you, Scotty. Nice to see you too, Catherine. Bless you, I say, and welcome to the program. Tremendous stuff. Now, can we share, folks? I can't actually share tonight because my devices are all in use. Ah, no, wait a minute. Perhaps I'm not coming out with effects. I could maybe manage a bit of sharing here. Did you see the um, roses, the June roses at McClue Towers? They are very nice. A little bit of comfort right here. Hold on a second. Do not go away. Oh, my goodness me. So there you are. I'm just uh, giving myself uh, a quick uh, a quick mop doon, as they say. Very important. A quick mop down. Right, let's see if we can get some sharing going here. I've got another device here. And we might manage to do a little bit of sharing on that. That would be rather good. So let's just see what is what here. Uh, if we can do that, that would be first class. Marvellous stuff, I see. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. But it's a bit askew there. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. We're live on Facebook Live, one of the world's great broadcast platforms, people listening all over the world. Catherine Murray, the sapper, remember him? Yes, Catherine, yes, lovely, lovely. Uh, is sapper, uh, well, tell me what's going on. You'll have to keep me up to date with the news. So there you are, and let me know what's what. No ropes, Scotty. So there we are. The SNP are going soft in prison. Stop putting the ordinary man in jail for debt. Stop finding people with no money. Well, that's what I'm saying. We've got the uh, non-habit, Sandy, and you should know about that. Man cannot give what he does not have. In Latin, non-habet. So there you are. That's you uh, up to date with that. 
So look at the non habit In other words, you can't take the breach half a helmet. That's uh, basically what it means. So there we go. I'm just seeing if I can do a bit of sharing here, guys. So you can do the same. Uh, get sorted out. We're a bit behind with our sharing, and we have to do that. Marvellous stuff. Right. I'll just share that. There we go. Excellent stuff. And uh, I'll let everybody know I was going live. So we've shared that. And what I'll do, I'll just post now and say live now. All right. Can you all share, guys? Share the broadcast as we speak. Very, very important. Let everybody know what's going on. Share now. Do you think Boris Johnson should be in office? If not, what job would you give him? Very interesting what's happening with Boris. Boris is getting a very hard time and stuff got overheard at a, a dinner. Um, I think they're running a bit scared of Brexit. I would actually chuck Brexit. I would stop it. I would go to Europe and say to Mr. Barnier and uh, Mr. Tusk and um, Angela Merkel and say to them, listen, guys, look, We've made a wee bit of a pig's ear of all this. Would you mind if we rescinded Article 50 as soon as possible? We'll all get back round the big table because it would suddenly give Mrs. May massive, massive negotiating power. We're staying in the customs union, blah, blah, blah. Also, there's talk of Ireland uniting. So there we are. It's very, very big. I'm serious about it. Uh, Paddle McFarlane, let's me see a more old-fashioned teaching of manners, respect, and discipline. It's all I want, I must have, or will cause havoc till I get it. People don't take control of the kids. They're almost feral. Well, this is the big worry, isn't it? We don't want feral children running about the town and city centres. Mr. McClue, I have a bonnet for work. It's a powerful article of clothing. Nobody, and I mean nobody, creates trouble for a man with a bonnet. Well, that's it. I mean, touch wood. I say, you know, or touch cloth, or go under touch wood here. Um, you know, I don't, I don't put up with any nonsense off folk with a, you know, I'll tell you that. Uh, so there you are. Uh, DJ Maximus has joined us. Dinky Do DJ Maximus, Stuart McKenna's watching. Lovely to have you with us. Come and join us, folks. I want to hear your opinion. You're watching Scotty McClue. We are exceptionally busy and we're live on the big one. Facebook Live, the one everyone's watching, the one everyone's talking about. Share and share and share and share and share and share and share this show with all your groups and with everybody else. Some young guy stole the wages from the Weaver's factory in East Weems, says James Adamson. Well, there you are. Uh, I've no doubt that will get sorted out. Uh, so there you are. So um, what is it you say? You keep your friends close and your enemies closer. So I think Mrs. May is just keeping it, um, Boris as close as possible at the moment. Um, people don't teach their children manners and respect. The prison's will, says Debbie Safford Thomas. Yes, I think people don't understand what being incarcerated is like. Now, I'm getting conflicting reports. A lot of prisoners used to write to me all the time. And uh, I've added a pipe to the management are speechless, says uh, Douglas McPherson. So there you are. What wonderful stuff. Hi, Scotty. A shout out to John in Bury, please. John P. Hazelton in Bury down in Manchester. I remember going to open the Bury Market. Come out away with two lovely black puddings. And what they do down there is they boil the puddings. How do you cook your black pudding? And how do you eat it? Do let me know. So there we are. Scotty, it was the EU's intransigence on the reforms we asked for which caused the referendum. Yes, but I mean, what's going to happen? Uh, you know, the real separatists are the Brexiteers, Sandy. And uh, they are the separatists. They are going to break up Britain. And uh, North and South Ireland may join up. Scotland will definitely go independent. And uh, that leaves little England uh, round about Watford, I would say. So that's what could happen there. Marvellous stuff. The wonderful God and Roddick watching. Dinky do to you, sir. Lovely to know you are there. You are a pillar of great reassurance for all Scottish broadcasters. Um, so that's that. Mark Finley's joined us. Dinky do, Mark. Lovely to have you with us, of course. Excellent stuff. We're getting some very big names in tonight, guys. The last time someone was hanged, 1909 at Perth Prison. <coughs> was there not one later than that? What about uh, Ruth Ellis? When was when was that? Was that not 19, 1950? 
Yes, I think there's highs later than that. And what about uh, what about Christie from Rillington Place? No, no, I don't. Think, I don't. Nineteen oh nine. Is that in Scotland, James? Is that what you're telling me? The last time somebody was hanged in Scotland, but there we are. I remember when I I just gone down to Red Rose Radio in Lancashire when I got the news that Albert Pierpoint, the last hangman, had died. He he rang. He ran a pub in Southport in Lancashire, and uh, Albert just passed away. And what he used to do, he smoked a cigar at the time of the hanging, and he was as humane as one could possibly be. He would uh, nip into the cell and say, don't worry, old fellow, we'll soon have your way. Uh, pop the rope on, the hood, the rope, bang, that was that. And then he, uh, he actually got fined a shilling, I think, for murder, 5p. For uh, for murder, for manslaughter, it wouldn't be for murder, but for manslaughter, and he had to pay the shilling <coughs> back, and then he got paid for the hanging. So there you are. As far as I understand it, whatever punishment they get, it's got to be a life for a life, says Steve Burroughs. Well, as Mahatma Gandhi, who was really a very, very, very wonderful man, and of course he got assassinated. It happens to all these wonderful people in light of the world, John F. Kennedy. Uh, Indira Gandhi, Mr. Nehru's daughter, you know, assassination. Shocking, shocking, shocking stuff. Uh, so there you are. But he said, if you took an eye for an eye, the whole world would be blind. Uh, there's a few management chaps could do with a hanging and not with an neck, says Douglas McPherson. So there you are. I used to worry about when people said they'd been picked up by the fuzz or hung by the Cherokees. So there you are. And um, Last hanging in the UK was 1964, Scotty. I thought so, Dave. Yes, absolutely. 1964, that makes sense. And then it was banned in 1965. It was a Labour MP, wasn't it, that really stood out to ban hanging. Uh, so there you are. Um, but uh, yes, I see where you come from. Lisa Wallace has joined us. Hi, Lisa. Dinky do. You're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet, Dinky Doo. And um, I think more than 15 years in prison might make murderers think they don't get enough punishment. So there you are. Well, that is a thought. Hello, hello, Scotty from the Taxi Owners Association in East Kilbride, from James and Lindsay. James and Lindsay, Dinky Doo. I've got two devices running tonight. Guys, can you hear me and see me? Okay, is everything loud and clear? So there we are, 964. Uh, Scott Wells, Dinky Do, lovely to have you with us. You're watching Scotty McClue. And guys, can every single one of you spread the word and tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live, just for you, Dinky Do. We're also looking at uh, streaming live on YouTube. So there you are. But I think uh, I can't do it on the old. Um, the old marshmallow, the Android marshmallow at the moment. Does anybody know when that's going to change? Does anybody know when Android marshmallow will allow streaming live on YouTube? Hello, Scotty, says Scott Wells. Dinky do. All cool, sounding great, says James Bauer. I thank you, James Bauer. You are very, very kind indeed. Very much appreciated. Uh, don't you think most politicians should be hung, Scotty, says Mark Finley. Bit harsh, bit savage there, Mark. No, no. What I would say about politicians, though, if they're caught telling an out and out lie, as actually happened around a lot of the Leave campaign for Brexit, there was a lot of people misconstruing the truth there. No names, no pack drill. They know who they are. But what I would say there is I think they should definitely lose their job if somebody said, no, you've misled not just Parliament, You've misled the country. You have to go now. That's a very serious offence, a very big misdemeanor. And the miscreants have to go. Yes, pal, can hear you and see you, says Thomas Hamilton. Thank you, Thomas. Scotty, you're still of the wizard and the toilet music, says John P. Hazelton. I've got the toilet music. And funny enough, I was thinking when we used to whip the wizard if he got names wrong. Do you remember that, John? So there you are. That was uh, that was the days. And I think we need to get back to that. I had a half-witted idiot today going, nobody wants you as a presenter because it's the same patter. Yes, that'll be why we get the uh, the two million audiences worldwide. Yes, very good. Yes, yeah, good for him. Everybody knows a bit more about your profession than yourself. Do you not find that amazing?
Right, Mr. McClure, do you think we'll win independence this time, says Douglas McPherson? I do, Douglas. Some people have been saying it's as high as 72% for independence. And if you look what happened to the Labour Party in Scotland when, uh, when the people were misled and, in fact, betrayed, I would say, by senior politicians and false promises, and they were just kicked into touch there in the wilderness now, wandering about in the political wilderness. And I don't think, unless Labour back independence, they'll uh, they'll get out of jail free. I really don't. So there you are. Um, hanging is harsh, but held to rights. More independent tribunals for MPs, I would say. Well, you know, MPs have got these select committees where they call people in, big business people, and get them in to apologize and to explain themselves for something that's gone wrong with their business and the public have been uh, harmed in some way by their misdemeanors. And uh, what I think is, what about if the public have got a select committee that they can uh, hold MPs to account? So you could be put on, I know it's a bit of a, a, a quango, as they were called, and that's uh, a bit Thatcherite, but in actual fact, a quango, a public quango, where MPs are held to account. It's just a thought. Um, so there you go, like uh, all McLean stuff's a thought. Anyone on the Isle of Skye, Friday the 22nd of June, Raintown in concert. We have a third year music student supporting us from Portree High School. Come along and enjoy the show, says James Bauer. How fabulous, James. Yes, the wizard was often naughty. Great days, great times, said John P. Hazleton. I think they'll come back, John. Um, I can't say too much, and I know people say it's been going on a long time, but I'm in uh, discussion, I won't say negotiations, discussion with very, very senior people in the in the British media, the UK media, about that Scotty McClure should definitely come back. And I think Scotty McClure should be allowed on the BBC. So if there's any senior decision makers watching from the BBC, think about having Scotty McClure and uh, that will put your commercial stations into meltdown. So there you are. That'll stop you worrying about uh, the commercial stations being far more interesting than the BBC. Put Scotty McClure on. Whoever has McClure has the market. So there we are. We'll get your big audiences. Uh, now then, who have we got here? Stop it, Scotty. The white paper was a fraud, says Sandy Howard. Which particular white paper are you talking about, Sandy? So there you are. You just come out with these statements and you don't give us any details. So we're supposed to be mind readers with you, Sandy. So there we are. Scott, is it not time that Ruth Davidson did something about the bigotry and racism in a party? Another story out tonight. I was thinking about the Tories in Scotland, Alan Gadden, and although the mainstream media give them uh, time that's disproportionate with the size of the party in Scotland, really what the Tories in Scotland say is uh, is neither here nor there. Nobody really says ichy or ochy about it. So there we are. They've got their head office in London, and I'm sure Mrs May would love to get into Scotland in a big way with the Tories, but it's certainly not happening at the moment. I predicted this 20 years ago. I said the Tories would come back, uh, meaning the mainstream, and I was, I was say, arguing on air with a guy called Willie. You'll get it on YouTube. Scotty McClure talks to Willie. And I was saying to him, the Tories will come back, but not in Scotland. I can't see it happening in Scotland. Scotty, they won't let um, independent supporters on the BBC, says Alan Cadden. Yeah, but I'm apolitical. I'm not a political person, Alan. I mean, I think Scotland would do very well independent, but that's not political. That's economically. Uh, you know, I, I think of things like the Macron report, Professor Macron, um, wonderful, wonderful economists, so there you are. And um, I think of things like that. <laughs> and I think, no, no, Scotland actually should be keeping its own money because Thatcher asset stripped it. So either they give Scotland that money back and say, look, we've got billions coming back to you, Scotland, so don't worry, or Scotland goes independent. There you are. Um, I lived in the USA for two good years. I saw patriotism and flags in every house. I want that for my country. My country is Scotland, not Britain. Well, it can't be Britain. Your country cannot possibly ever be Britain because there is no such country as Britain, right? Britain is an amalgam 
of four countries. It used to be three, it's four now, right, since 1922, when they annexed the six counties of Ireland, of Ulster, which is eight counties, and they, they annexed six of them. And um, you've got um, Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, and Wales. So there you are. I mean, uh, Britain used to think it had a claim to the whole of Ireland, but Northern Ireland now, and Wales, and there's a lot of serious talk about Ireland reunifying. Uh, so there we are. Um, very, very interesting. Chris Johnson's joined us. Uh, so there you are. So Alan Cadden, in answer to that, the BBC have absolutely no reason not to have Scotty McClure. I've never put a foot wrong in 26 years. And um, I remember going to see the BBC, and they were delighted. They were very, very excited about Scotty McClure joining them. And then somebody upstairs had kiboshed it because um, probably they were worried about their job. No reason to be. No harm in McClure. All we do is proper serious debate. We don't suffer fools gladly. And um, there it goes. And we have a laugh. We do information, education, and entertainment. It's well proven. And we bring in uh, massive, massive audiences and serious money if it's a commercial organization. When you think over the years, I've presided over things that have changed hands for uh, about £200 million in total. Interesting, isn't it? Um, Sandy, what's was on about the 2014 Indie paper? You know, it was Sandy, this is nothing to do with it, right? When you're looking at independence, you don't go looking at the tiny money, the cost. I mean, Nicola was being asked the other day, very prematurely by a journalist, a television journalist, what would the cost be? And they were talking around £450 million. Pounds. That's not even one month's levy to Westminster from Scotland. So there you are. So it would all be cleared in a month, four weeks. So there you go. So you have Independence Sandy, four weeks, all sorted, all paid for, done and dusted. All right. So let's be telling the truth. Seven minutes left, Scotty. Oh, no, Thomas. And we haven't had a tune at all tonight. Would you like a tune? How would you like um, a wee uh, hymn? <laughs> I know these people say, I know these people say they, they go, oh, yeah, so, oh, yeah, Scotland's not religious anymore. That's all gone. Well, that's maybe because we don't, I think I'll have a wee drink of water if everybody's up for that. Mm. Oh, that is lush. Guys, can we have some serious sharing? Share, 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 share. Independence is work in progress. Have you noticed, though, it's very interesting, there's been a massive sea change within the last few weeks, and the establishment are coming round to the fact that Scotland uh, will be independent, but we must bring the crown with us and have the crown on board. So stop your nasty low-life comments about uh, the crown and the royal family and things like that. Just stop it, folks, because you're damaging the independence campaign beyond belief. All right. Do you think Ireland uh, deal could work? A lot of water's gone under the bridge over the years there. A recent poll in Northern Ireland actually swung for the two parts to unite with the EU. Yeah, absolutely, Dave Harley. The things change. The water under the bridge has changed. The sort of hardened Ulster person that uh, Edward VIII told Prince Charles about when they met the two Prince of Wales meeting. Uh, you know, very, very interesting. And um, Edward VIII, uh, the Duke of Windsor, and he said to Prince Charles, yes, the hardened Ulster people, that's the problems, because the king was involved in the 1920s and 1930s, of course. And also Lloyd George was the Prime Minister, if I remember right, at the time of the Easter Risings. Good luck to Ron Rigg on the final tour of Europe after 40 years plus. These guys, musically, have put our beautiful country on the map. Good night, pal. Have a good week. See you next Sunday. Fantastic. Guys, get sharing. Would you like a tune in the pipe organ? I've just had an idea for a tune, just when you mentioned a certain group there. So there we are. Right, I'll move this over for you, if you like. Another good show, Scotty, is of Steve Burroughs. Dinky do, Steve. That's fantastic. Are we ready? <laughs> Thank you. 
McClure, I thought of your all opinions from the previous week, and I agree, yes, the laws are important to Scots independence. I'm on board with you now with the idea. Thank you, Douglas McPherson. You've got to remember, Scotty McClure might be the world's most humble man, but I am a visionary. I am the world's top broadcaster. I am the first lord of the internet. I do hold the record for 460,000 calls to a radio station in one week. These are the figures the BBC should be looking at, all right? Uh, Loch Lomans is James Barry. Yes, indeed, very much. So everybody in the independence movement, drop your prejudices because your prejudices are very, very ill-founded and start to take on board that we need the crown with us for independence. Otherwise, it will not happen. Remember, the, the Scottish crown is uh, united with the English crown, right? And the crown is the symbol of authority in this country. So for independence, you will need royal assent. The independence bill can only become an act if it has royal assent. Why should the Queen sign that if she's not getting a fair deal? Okay? Have you got all that, guys? Just about to watch a repeat of the show, says Ben Lucas. Ben Lucas, dinky-doo. Lovely to have you with us. Lovely to have you all with us. Unfortunately, I think we're just about at the end of the show. And we have to dash off another couple of minutes. So uh, you'll see what's going on there. Another great show, Scotty Dinky Do, I say to all of you. And um, does anybody still know what Sandy's on about? Always good to know what Sandy's on about. Marvelous stuff. Willie Cameron's just joined us. Hello, he says. Hello. Now, remember, you can see the show during the week live here on Facebook on the Facebook page, and also uh, you'll get it uploaded to YouTube. Very, very important. This is show number 95, right? I remember somebody saying, it seems to be yesterday since we clicked the icon and actually went live on um, Facebook Live. How marvelous is that? We'll probably end up streaming on YouTube as well, guys. It's work in progress, and it's all happening. There's talk about going back on the radio. There's talk about television shows. So you will be he hearing and seeing much, much more of Scotty McClue. I can tell you that for nothing. David Niggas is with us, a fine fellow as well. We're going to have to dash, David. You're just in time, I think. Right, folks, thank you so much for being with me. It's been a lovely, lovely show. Lovely being with you this week. So much to talk about. So little time to do it in, as always. And I'll see you all next week at the same time, 9 o'clock sharp. God willing, weather permitting. Dinky do. See you next week. Have a great night, Scotty. Have a lovely week, guys. I'm going to sing you the song. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody of Wheater Zane. Au revoir and a cheery oh I'll play you out. Are we ready? Think you do, everybody. I'm off. ta -da. Scotty McClure has left the building. Now, I'll probably be around here because this doesn't like actually being put off. It doesn't mind cutting itself off, but it does not like being put off. Dinky-doo, dinky-doo. There we go. And uh, here we go. Clickety-click, I say. Clickety-click.